Hi everyone, today we're going to work on properties with rational numbers, and this is your lecture video number five. Our common core standard is NS 7.1D, applying properties of operations as strategies to add and subtract rational numbers. Um, here is your interactive foldable that should be in your notebook already, and don't forget to fill out the title, the learning goal in your own words, and your what I know section of your notes. Um, a few of these properties should seem very familiar to you. The commutative property, the associative property, and the identity property are all things that we discussed in class. I will go over them briefly, but not in detail today. So the commutative property, if you remember, um, if you flip up your tab so you can write underneath there, the commutative property is when we have two numbers, A and B, and they decide to switch places to B and A. The commutative properly will work for addition, but also for multiplication. And so if we show some examples, I can say 2 plus 3 is 5, of course, but 3 plus 2 is also 5. So that makes the commutative property true. The distributive property is a new concept that we're going to talk about today. We went over it a tiny bit in class as you were working on your new stages. However, um, let's get the real definition for distributive property. The function we're going to look at looks like a times b plus c. The distributive property, as you can see, includes multiplication and addition in the same problem. Where's the multiplication sign? It's invisible, and it's right between the A and the parentheses. The best way to do this kind of problem is with an actual example, but let me finish with the variables first. Distributive property says that I need to distribute, or hand out, my letter A to both of the variables inside the parentheses. In order to do that, I will say A times B. I'm going to keep the plus sign in the middle, plus A times C. Let's look at some numbers. 2 quantity, um, 4 plus 5 would equal 2 times 4 plus 2 times 5. These types of examples you do have to finish in order to solve out. So 2 times 4 equals 8 plus 2 times 5 equals 10. So my final answer to that sort of problem is 18. You're going to see a lot of distributive proper property examples in pre-algebra and algebra, so it's really important to um, learn a little bit about distributive property. A good way to remember it is to think of it as the trick-or-treat problem. I always say, if you're going from house to house to house getting candy, you want the most candy you possibly can. So if you're trick-or-treating, or, -treating, or um, if you arrive at a house, and the person at that house opens the door, and there's you and your friend there waiting, that person has to give candy to you, and they have to give it to your friend. It's not fair to just give candy to one person and not the other. So we have to make sure that the candy it's evenly distributed throughout the equation. The next property we'll go over is the associative. Some people confuse the associative property and the commutative property, I'm sorry, and the distributive property because they both have parentheses. The difference is that the associative property has A, B, and C, and they always remain in the same order. The change in the property is the grouping of those letters. So in the first half of my equation, A and B are grouped together. And in the second half, B and C are grouped together. Again, let's look at some numbers. 2 plus 3 plus 4 equals 2 plus 3 plus 4. And we're just going to move the parentheses. Why are the parentheses there? They tell us which part of the equation to solve first. So in my first half, I'm going to solve the 2 plus 3 first, which is 5. And then I'll add my 4, and that will equal 9. The other side of my equation, I'm going to add the 
3 and the 4 first because those are the numbers in the parentheses. So I have 7 plus 2, which also equals 9. That's what I'm trying to prove. Both sides of my equation will be equal no matter where the parentheses are. Next, we're going to discuss the zero property. And the zero property is, again, something um, that I'm sure you'll see and you've, you'll find it familiar. Um, however, you probably never knew that there was a name for it. The zero property says that a times zero equals zero. Or any number in the world, 1, 7, 3, 22, <laughs> any of these numbers times zero will always equal zero. That's important to know. Um, if you were trying to cancel out a number in a long mathematical problem, it might help to multiply it by zero to clear it out and make it equal to zero so you don't have to worry about it anymore. And lastly, the identity property. That's that property we talked about in class again with the mirror, right? So if we have a and we add zero, it's still going to equal to a. If we have a and we multiply by 1, it's still going to be equal to a. So these are those numbers that are really, really in love with themselves and they never ever want to change at all, and so they only want to look in the mirror and they only want to see their own true identity. Don't forget to complete the left side page of your notes for tonight, the what I learned section. Your proof is to write a trick or treat story about the distributive property. And show me an example. Also complete your reflection. I've seen some really great reflections lately, so be sure to keep up the good work. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good weekend.